Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be focusing on shading, pencil shading. I'm going to show you three different ways of adding shading uh, to a drawing. Now I've chosen as an example an egg, but this really isn't uh, limited to drawing eggs. I guess I could do such a video if you want me to, but really uh, I want you to learn the different techniques here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this first one and get into it. All right, so for this first style of uh, shading, I'm going to go back to a style that I used a lot when I was in high school. Uh, it consists entirely of uh, diagonal lines, and I sort of associate this uh, approach with uh, sketches uh, and not so much with finished uh, illustrations, but, you know, this uh, certainly could be a shading style that you use um, for finished published work. I mean, these days uh, everyone sort of finds their own style and there's no uh, agreed upon sort of, you know, this is what finished shading looks like versus uh, sketch shading, you know. Uh, people are, are using a wide variety of approaches. So if you find, you know, if you, if you try this out and you find that you like it, um, it is by no means uh, limited to uh, shading, or I mean shading. <laughs> I used to be able to speak English. Uh, maybe need more coffee. Uh, it's by no means uh, limited to sketching, I should say. Um, but basically what you're doing uh, when you choose to work in this style by having every single one of the lines be, um, you know, diagonal, uh, I think, I feel that the effect that you get is you're sort of looking through a filter almost, you know, like the the shading becomes a kind of um, uh, window through which you are seeing the image. It's a little bit like uh, pointillism to me, you know, where it's all made up of dots, uh, stippling, I guess I should say, uh, where in a way the shading becomes, um, you know, because it's so consistent all the way through, it I feel that it becomes a little detached almost from the drawing, like the drawing is on the other side of the shading, if that makes any sense. And I can't see that it possibly does. <laughs> anyway, so you can see me going again and again, just uh, one on top of the other, and then, uh, and, and this is going to change in subsequent uh, uh, versions of the, the way I shade the egg. Uh, even when doing the drop shadow, which is to say the shadow as it falls on the uh, ground, I am going to sort of force myself to uh, continue using this same diagonal shading approach and to not change the angle. Now I have to admit, as someone who has not used this uh, shading approach for quite a long time, it is, I sort of have to force myself to do this because my instinct is to, to turn the pencil a little bit sideways and start trying to convey you know, that the, f the ground is laying flat here. Uh, but because I've chosen this uh, diagonal uh, hatching style, I'm going to force myself to stay consistent to that. Now, this video is going to have a lot of time lapse. Last week I did this How to Draw Nose video in which I drew the nose entirely real time, and uh, Old Man Time Lapse was not happy about that. <laughs> you have to use time lapse in every video! It's in my contract! So uh, in order to not have him <laughs> turning his attorneys against me, I guess I should go ahead and use some time lapse this video. I'm going to finish this up, but I'll be back to say a few concluding remarks about this style of shading before we move on to the next one. Okay, so you can see I switched uh, to using this black colored pencil to um, intensify the contrast, but the same principle applies. I'm just building up all these lines uh, in the same direction. This is the company that makes this is Prismacolor people. It's become kind of like a ongoing gag with this channel. The black Prismacolor, the trusty black Prismacolor, but you don't have to buy uh, the company, the Prismacolor brand, You any good quality. Uh, black colored pencil will allow you to get this level of contrast. Now there's uh, three different things that I thought of that I should mention. One is that um, I'm working with the natural pivot point of my wrist as a right-handed person. If I were left-handed, I would definitely 
be um, working with diagonal uh, pencil strokes going in this direction. Uh, and you notice that um, for me, it's, it's easy to go away from my body as I draw the pencil strokes. I think I've heard from some people who find that unnatural, uh, that for them it feels more natural to come back toward uh, their body as they draw. And, you know, certainly if that is the natural thing for you, then that's the way to go. What I noticed is that um, when I came to the edge, say the upper edge of this uh, egg, that was a point where I thought if I go this way, it's going to be very hard to stop right where I want to stop. So I, just in that area, I would begin to reverse course so as to have more control of the starting point and then, you know, having the having it sort of trail off into the rest of the shading. So, uh, something to be said there. And then one last thing is that I think a lot of people, uh, when I make a video like this, will say, you know, I don't have any problem adding shading, I just don't know where to add the shading. Uh, where does the shading go? Uh, by which I believe a lot of, uh, is, you know, a lot of that refers to where do the shadows go? And it becomes an issue of light and uh, shadow. Well, happily, I've done uh, a couple of videos on that, and I will link to them uh, in the description. Uh, videos that focus on the light source and how that affects where the shadows uh, fall. But you're not going to hear me talking too much about that in this video. Let's move on now, straight away, into the next uh, egg. I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, the fo focus exactly where it is. And this is going to be my cross-hatching egg. Uh, so, uh, in a way, this uh, begins to double up on previous videos that I've done on cross-hatching. And uh, I'm going to show you my approach to cross-hatching. I'm going to do maybe one, two, three, four uh, lines in this direction. And then notice I'm kind of following along with the um, imagined surface of the egg as I do, you know, roughly four at a time, these uh, little patches of lines. Now at this point I believe technically this would be called hatching rather than cross hatching because you haven't gone across <laughs> any of the lines. But definitely uh, my intention with this, and I'll go ahead and move on to it right now, is to begin building up second layers. Now you can see hopefully how all of these lines are pointed in one particular direction uh, I'm very very reluctant to add a second layer that goes right across at a 90 degree angle. To me that sort of um, looks like <laughs> waffles or something, which I love. I love to eat waffles, but I don't want to see waffles on the side uh, of this egg illustration that I'm doing. What I tend to do is, uh, you know, if, if all the lines are going in this direction, I will slightly alter the angle so as to get a little more of a, like a what would that be, a 20 degree angle, something like that. And basically that's my goal for most of the second layer when I add it on top. I'm not going directly across, going very uh, slightly across. Um, and to me that results in more beautiful looking cross hatching. I don't want to say that that is the only way of doing it. Uh, I'm sure that there are plenty of people that do that sort of 90 degree angle uh, hatching and, and get really good results uh, with it. Um, but I have just found that I get an, an even, a, a more even tone uh, when I don't cross straight over. I guess less of the white of the page shows through is maybe the key there. Now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, you know, this piece of paper is taped down and I'm going to uh, detach it. Oh, can you hear that? Detach it from uh, the surface below, allowing me to begin uh, spinning this around, and I guess I'll go ahead and rather than <laughs> it'll be warts and all, guys. You're going to hear me taking this thing off of the uh, surface below, and then uh, that will free me up to begin uh, spinning the paper, which uh, you know, especially in time lapse, can be very disorienting to the viewer of the video, and that's why uh, I very often. Um, keep these things taped to the ground, really just for the viewer, not not for the ease of my drawing, it's more so that people watching the video uh, don't have this thing constantly spinning around and confusing them. Uh, but it must be said, um, 
being able to turn the paper is actually very important, uh, certainly with this method of cross hatching that I'm doing, because uh, again, it's the natural pivot point of my wrist uh, that I'm always working with. Um, and so by turning the page, turning the paper, I'm able to keep these lines following the form uh, of the egg, right? Sort of uh, suggesting the the edge, the direction that that the shell is uh, going in. I hope that makes sense. It's a little hard to uh, describe, but in this case, I guess to uh, by way of contrast, uh, with the other form, the other drawing, I was not trying to have the lines follow the form, right? They don't change direction. They're all just going in one direction. One direction? <laughs> Sorry. I, did, I didn't I did do it. I didn't turn it into a joke. <laughs> I guess I did. Anyway, so um, just keep, uh, uh, I keep turning the page, turning the, uh, spinning the paper a little bit so as to uh, have these lines follow the uh, contours, I suppose the surface of the egg. Anyway, oh, it is way past time to bring in old man time lapse. We're going to go ahead and finish up my cross hatching all around uh, this egg and even use cross hatching for the shadow of the egg. Uh, and then we'll be back to do my uh, third style of shading uh, before wrapping up the video. All right, well, there's the uh, cross-hatched version. Uh, I must say this uh, technique takes much more time than this one. Uh, probably spend about an hour uh, building up these uh, various layers uh, of cross-hatching. There is a certain beauty to it, though, and um, almost kind of therapeutic, I think, the, the incremental pace at which it is uh, built up. There's something sort of satisfying. Or <laughs> it's incredibly <laughs> tedious, depending on your experience of it. I would encourage you to try lots of different styles of shading um, and uh, indeed to be capable of, uh, of doing different types of shading depending on the project. Anyway, it is time to move on to the third and final egg. Let's get into it. All right, now with this one, before we even get started, I'm going to pull out my kneaded eraser and I'm going to start to kind of um, lighten the line work here because with this one I really do want to go um, for a greater look of realism, perhaps even getting close to photorealism. Um, and that, of course, uh, maybe I shouldn't say of course, I don't know if it's obvious, but um, if you've got a very bold line around the edge of something, it's not going to look photorealistic because uh, objects in real life don't have such lines around them. Um, now in the previous versions of the uh, egg drawing that I've done in this video, um, I've done what I would call a linear shading, that is to say shading in which individual lines are uh, remain visible. And indeed, um, the artist wants them to remain visible to some degree. It's part of the look that they're going for. This time, I'm going for what I would uh, say is non-linear shading. I don't want individual lines to remain visible. And so I'm lowering my pencil down to, to the page at a very low angle. I'm holding very far back so as to uh, help me get that angle. And uh, I am exposing quite a lot of the lead to the page, and in doing so, um, we get away from uh, individual lines and get more into just a, an area of tone. Um, if you want lines, uh, you hold the angle, uh, you know, you get a, a sharper angle to the surface, and then the tip of the, of the pencil is the only thing that's touching, and you get lines, just like when you sign your name. Um, when you're trying to avoid lines, it's super helpful to, to get this lower angle of the pencil. Now in terms of the uh, direction that my pencil is moving in, I'm kind of doing circular motions, and this is uh, a shading approach that I use, especially when my final goal is uh, for there to be no individual lines 
um, visible. And I find that doing a bunch of little circles again and again, over and over again, um, that the effect is to just create a, a, a sort of even blanket of tone. Uh, and you can see how light I'm keeping things. Uh, and it, it has this whole feeling of a, a, like a base layer of shading with the intention of gradually building on top of it. I mean, all of these really have that aspect of beginning with a base layer and that is that you know that is not the final line work that's the sort of underpinning of the drawing that's my approach to shading um, but it, it is by no means the only uh, approach and a lot of people uh, especially with inking styles will go much more bold in the in the line that goes down nothing goes on top of that line and that, uh, that's the final line in any case you can see uh, my approach basically and I continue uh, layering again and again uh, on top of uh, what I've put down to begin with and, and indeed already you're starting to see just a very smooth uh, gray fog of, uh, of shading that is not composed of individual lines. And that is basically it. I'm going to go ahead and kick it into time lapse one last time. Come on, old man time lapse. Get in here. <laughs> and help me finish off this illustration. You're making me hungry for hard-boiled eggs! And uh, we will finally finish this up and be back with a few final words. Okay, well, I don't know if this qualifies as uh, true photorealism, but it's certainly closer to that uh, than the other two styles that I showed you today. And uh, I just wanted to say uh, that, you know, sometimes I hear from people whose art teachers will show uh, one of my videos in the classroom. You might want to let them know about this one, the shading. This is definitely something that art teachers uh, are, uh, you know, constantly trying uh, to give instruction on, and they might appreciate it. Uh, this approach of showing the three different styles all in one video. Anyway, let me refocus the camera so that we can see all three of the eggs side by side. So there you see the three different styles side by side. Sort of interesting to compare them. And I hope you find this video useful. I hope you'll try using one or more of these different shading uh, techniques in your own work. But before I go, I want to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, The Realism Challenge. Curly, what's with the egg obsession? This is my book on hyperrealism, The Drawing Lesson. This is also another good one to tell your art teachers about. I think they would get a kick out of this, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. And Manga Art, my very latest book. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who support me by getting those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.